The front lines tonight are speaking out. WGN's Dina Baer returned to Highland Park Hospital today to get the exclusive interviews. Unlike the rest of us who got alerts and saw the images on television, the doctors and nurses at Highland Park Hospital found out about the tragedy as people walked into their emergency room crying out, I've been shot. In the hour after the first patient arrived, nearly 30 others followed. A controlled chaos with amazingly caring people who saved lives when a community was in crisis. I knew I needed to do something to respond. Hard to believe, right? We all work in this nice little community where you never expect any of this to happen. And they come in and they're telling us their shootings, their shootings. We're focused completely on how could we take care of the patients we're here. 10:23, our walk-in started and they just kept coming before we even got a call from EMS. I think every day I do get twinges of what that day was. Um, you know, you get kind of like little memories of it or when you walk past certain areas, you think about it. I will never forget it. It was war wounds and that's when you just have to separate it and just put your head in and focus. I just hope that people will take this and that this won't be forgotten and that we don't just add it to the list of mass shootings and deaths due to gun violence. My name is Dr. Brigham Temple. I'm an emergency medicine physician. I work for the North Shore University Health System. On July 4th, where were you? I was here in Highland Park. I'm a resident of Highland Park. I was with my wife and three children and my parents who were visiting from out of town. And I was on Central Street. The moment that there was a realization that there was a shooting, what was that like? My first inclination was actually to go up and try to see if there was a situation that I could help. There was blood. There was, it was, it was a movie. It was like being in a movie. Deb Schmidt and I'm an emergency room nurse here. That's all they kept repeating. We've been shot, we've been shot. The parade, the parade, and then you're trying to ask them where they were and what happened. Tell me about how many patients are coming in, in in what brief period of time? 26, I believe it was, in that hour of 26 with five nurses, one doctor, ICU nurses that came to help, the techs from the other floors, you know, our staff coming in once it got, you know, the pages went out, everyone, other hospitals sending their ER staff. And so we were really able to, in a very short amount of time, see all 26 of those patients and take care of them. IVs, you hang your fluids, put them on a monitor, make sure they were stable and kind of, you had to move on to your next one. You had one cr more critical than the next, truthfully. Our first ones were the walking wounded, of course, right? But then when the ambulances started coming in and it was a sicker and sicker patient, you almost felt like you were at war. I received notification on my way that the hospital had gone into a security lockdown, that we weren't letting somebody in that was trying to also do harm here in the hospital. So at that point, I knew we had a very serious scenario that was going on. To my knowledge, we've never had a mass casualty event that has occurred at, at this magnitude that's been here at this hospital. How many patients did you operate on that day? I operated on one patient. Uh, Cooper Roberts, the eight-year-old uh, that was here at Highland Park. Uh, my name is Anna Velez Rospero. I am a trauma and acute care surgeon at North Shore. And it's hard whenever you're dealing with any type of patient that's injured in this way, but especially when it's someone that young. As soon as I saw him, I knew we needed to operate. The bullet had gone through the left side of his liver. Uh, it had also injured his esophagus and his abdominal aorta, which is the main blood vessel that gives blood from the heart to the body, uh, and then had exited the uh, back. Um, and at that point, we didn't know it, but it injured his spinal cord. When you hear the type of weapon that is used, you know these injuries are different. In what way? What does that do to the body? They're devastating. They create um, very large wounds. Um, they basically destroy organs. They destroy soft tissue. They destroy bone. 
he received uh, what we call massive transfusion, just an enormous amount of blood uh, in order to keep him alive during the operation. Uh, because the, the injury to the aorta was so destructive, uh, there was no way we were gonna be able to repair it, so we actually had to cut out that segment of aorta and replace it with a synthetic graft. And then the esophagus, we um, sewed it uh, to repair it, and then we uh, repaired the injury to his liver also by sewing it. So we um, wheeled Cooper down from the operating room. Um, the EMS team um, was planning to transport him by helicopter to Comer, and we were able to wheel him past his mom and his dad um, on the way to the helicopter so that she could see him, so they could both see him. There was also a communication with police as the suspect was headed back this way. And you knew that there was a very real possibility that as he was being arrested, he could be injured and would potentially be brought here. That's correct. We're, we're not here to be judge or jury. Our job is to take care of people. You looked back to say, what can we do the next time? And how sad is that in this country that we have to think there may be a next time? Any event that occurs, we have to always look and say, what were the things that we did well? And where are the opportunities to look and see if we can do things better? Being able to actually um, take care of a patient um, in the worst moment of their life and a family in the worst moment of their lives and see them to the other side, I think that's why we do it, because we can hopefully give somebody another chance. At the end of your day, did you speak? Did you embrace? What was that like? I feel as though we actually embraced a lot in the mid-afternoon. And I think that just shows of the family that we have in the emergency room. Just a simple hug, a thank you. We have to stick together. To a person, staff at Highland Park and those who helped them on that horrific day say the good that came from cooperation overshadows the hateful act. Tomorrow, we talk about healing, how victims, their families, and the community are facing a mental health impact. And we look at identifying the warning signs of someone in crisis who may turn to violence. That's tomorrow night. Back to you. Remarkable.